Pinellas County welcomes you to the Alternatives Workshop for the Dunedin Causeway Bridges Project Development and Environment, or PD&E, study. Pinellas County, in coordination with the Florida Department of Transportation and the Federal Highway Administration, is conducting this PD&E study to evaluate potential improvements to the bridges along the causeway. The study has been underway since January 2015. The study limits extend from west of Royal Stewart Arms Parkway on Honeymoon Island to the intersection of Gary Place, Gary Circle on Ward Island. The study has focused on potential improvements to the two existing bridges within the study limits. The main bascule or movable bridge spans the Gulf Intracoastal Waterway and connects Ward Island to Dunedin Causeway. The Tide Relief Bridge spans the relief channel and connects the causeway to Honeymoon Island. Improvements to the roadway or beach areas along the causeway will not be evaluated during this study. Both bridges were constructed in 1963 and have been in service for more than 50 years. Both bridges have deteriorated and are in need of rehabilitation or replacement. In the most recent Florida Department of Transportation, or FDOT, inspection reports, the main bridge received a sufficiency rating of 48.6, and the Tide Relief Bridge received a sufficiency rating of 58 on a scale of 1 to 100. This rating reflects the structural condition and operational characteristics of the bridge. A rating of 100 indicates excellent condition. Bridges with a rating less than 80 may warrant rehabilitation or replacement. Both bridges are considered functionally obsolete, primarily because of their narrow width. There are no bike lanes and only minimal shoulders on both bridges. The narrow 3.5-foot wide sidewalk does not meet standards established by the Americans with Disabilities Act. The sidewalk linking the Pinellas Trail Spur does not meet current standards for width of multi-use trails. The bridge rails are also substandard. Corrosion of steel and deterioration of concrete has resulted from exposure to the aggressive marine environment. The ability for the bridge structure to resist damage from storm waves during hurricanes or vessel collision is substandard. Both bridges are classified as scour critical, indicating that they are susceptible to instability due to erosion of bottom soils around bridge piles. Machinery and electrical equipment that operate the movable span on the main bridge have deteriorated due to age and wear. The existing main bridge provides a minimum of 20 feet of vertical clearance and 90 feet of horizontal clearance for boats traveling on the waterway. The U.S. Coast Guard guidelines at this location are a minimum of 21 feet of vertical clearance for a new movable bridge and a minimum of 65 feet of vertical clearance for a fixed bridge. The U.S. Coast Guard recommends a minimum horizontal clearance of 100 feet between the fenders of any new bridge at this location on the Intracoastal Waterway. The existing Tide Relief Bridge provides a minimum of 12.5 feet of vertical clearance near the seawalls and 14 feet of vertical clearance at the center span. The horizontal clearance between the bridge piers is 45 feet. Since the relief channel is not a federally authorized channel, the U.S. Coast Guard has not established clearance guidelines for this bridge or location. However, the U.S. Coast Guard will require that a replacement bridge provide navigational clearances that equal or exceed those of the existing bridge. The goal of the PD&E study is to develop a recommended alternative that is supported by a consensus of stakeholders, meets transportation and community needs, and minimizes environmental, social, and economic impacts. In addition, the conceptual design for the recommended alternative must be approved by the Federal Highway Administration, or FHWA. The FHWA requires that the PD&D study process complies with the National Environmental Policy Act of 1969, commonly referred to as NEPA, to qualify for possible federal funding. The FHWA NEPA project development process is an approach to balanced transportation decision making that takes into account the potential impacts on the human and natural environment and the public's need for safe and efficient transportation. The PD&E process includes engineering studies, social and environmental studies, and community involvement. Steps in the process include development of alternative concepts, evaluation of alternatives, and selection of a recommended alternative. 
The recommended alternative will require approval by Pinellas County, FDOT, and FHWA. Development of alternatives will include consideration of comments you provide at tonight's meeting and all public comments. Other key factors considered when evaluating alternatives include the following. Community input. Impacts to adjacent property. Utility impacts. Impact to navigation. Impacts and access to recreation areas and parks. Impacts to cultural resources. Air and noise impacts. Impacts to wildlife and habitat and wetlands. Need for safe pedestrian and bicycle facilities. Need for safe and efficient transportation. Visual impacts and aesthetics. Construction impacts and costs. Public parks, recreation areas, wildlife and waterfowl refuges, and historic sites are afforded special protection by the federal government under Section 4F of the 1966 U.S. Department of Transportation Act as amended. Impacts to these areas are approved only if there are no prudent or feasible alternatives. The Federal Highway Administration may require mitigation for unavoidable impacts. Opportunity for public input concerning these impacts is required. Areas that potentially could be afforded protection under Section 4F include the Pinellas Trail, the recreation areas along the causeway, the City of Dunedin Rotary Park, and the Honeymoon Island State Park. Coordination is ongoing with the Federal Highway Administration to determine whether Section 4F applies to these areas. A wide range of stakeholders will be affected by improvements to the Dunedin Causeway bridges. In addition to local governments and local residents, the causeway is important to boaters, local visitors and tourists, and business owners. The bridge provides the only access to Honeymoon Island and to recreational areas along the causeway. It is also an important link for emergency services and hurricane evacuation. A kickoff open house was held in March 2015. The county received more than 250 comment forms and questionnaires from about 239 attendees. In addition to this workshop, opportunities for stakeholders to provide input during the PD&E study will include meetings with homeowner and community groups, coordination with local government staff and officials, and coordination with regulatory agencies. The City of Dunedin has established the Dunedin Causeway Bridges Ad Hoc Advisory Committee, which includes representatives of many local community organizations. You can provide comments by visiting the project website, pinellascounty.org slash Dunedin Causeway. A public hearing will also be held to present the recommended alternative. The purpose of tonight's workshop is to present the alternatives that have been determined to be viable, compare potential impacts of viable alternatives, and provide you with an opportunity to express your opinions about the project. Informational and graphic boards are on display. 3D models of the alternatives considered are available for your review. Project team members will also be available to take your comments and answer questions. The following alternatives have been evaluated for both the Main Bascule Bridge and Tide Relief Bridge. The No Build Alternative, Rehabilitation of the Existing Bridges, Replacement of the Existing Bridges. The No Build Alternative includes only routine maintenance to keep the bridges open to traffic until safety issues would require them to be closed. Evaluation of future improvements would occur at a later date. Evaluation of this alternative is required by FHWA guidelines. This alternative will be considered a viable alternative until after the public hearing. Rehabilitation was evaluated for both the Tide Relief Bridge and the Main Bascule Bridge. It is the opinion of the project team that the rehabilitation alternative would not meet the purpose and need of the project, which includes providing improved pedestrian and bicycle facilities. In addition, the rehabilitation alternative would not meet minimum engineering standards. The bridges would not be widened. No changes to the existing roadway geometry would result from rehabilitation. Narrow sidewalks and the very narrow multi-use path, which serves as the spur of the Pinellas Trail, would remain. In addition, the substandard narrow shoulders would remain. The minimum navigational clearance of the main bascule bridge would not meet the U.S. Coast Guard guidelines. Even if rehabilitated, both bridges would likely need to be replaced in about 25 years. Accordingly, it was determined that rehabilitation was not viable for either bridge. 
rehabilitation with widening was also considered. This option is not feasible for the main movable bridge since it would require replacement or major reconstruction of the bascule piers and leaves. The condition and type of the bridge foundations are unknown and may not be able to support the additional weight of the added bridge deck. The tide relief bridge, even if rehabilitated and widened, would likely need to be replaced within 25 years. Continued costly repairs are anticipated to maintain the rehabilitated bridges and unattractive structural repairs would be required. For these reasons, rehabilitation with widening was also eliminated from further consideration. A preliminary screening analysis of nine replacement alternatives for the main bridge and two replacement alternatives for the tide relief bridge was conducted in June 2015. Factors considered for the preliminary screening of alternatives included impacts to wetlands, impacts to seagrass, impacts to major utilities, impacts to recreational areas, impacts to potential Section 4F lands, duration of construction, and community input. The existing typical section for both bridges provides one 11-foot travel lane with a 2-foot shoulder in each direction. A 3.5-foot sidewalk exists on the north side. A 6-foot sidewalk on the south side functions as the multi-use path for the Honeymoon Island Spur of the Pinellas Trail. The overall width of both bridges is 40 feet 1 inch. The overall width of the proposed typical section for both bridges is 62 feet 7 inches. The replacement bridges would provide two 11-foot travel lanes with 8-foot outside shoulders, a 5-foot sidewalk on the north side, and a 15-foot multi-use trail on the south side. This proposed typical section was assumed for the preliminary screening and is also proposed for all viable alternatives. Limited space between the causeway and Honeymoon Island will require replacement alternatives for the tide relief bridge to be constructed in phases to maintain traffic. Accordingly, two alternative alignments that only partially shift the location of the tide relief bridge to the north and south were considered. A preliminary screening analysis indicated that potential environmental and recreational impacts of both the north and south alignments are anticipated to be low. The north alignment would impact major utilities owned by the City of Dunedin. Considerable public opposition for the north alignment was also expressed because of potential visual impacts to residents of Honeymoon Island. For these reasons, a replacement on the south alignment was selected for further study. The proposed tide relief bridge, shifted slightly south of the existing bridge, will provide a minimum vertical clearance of 14.5 feet compared to 12.5 feet for the existing bridge. Vertical clearance will be 18 feet at the center span. The horizontal clearance for boats between the piers will be 115 feet. The grade on the bridge will be somewhat steeper than the existing bridge for a short distance, but will not exceed 5%. The proposed bridge will be approximately 9 feet higher than the existing bridge at its highest point. Raising the bridge will reduce the potential for damage from high waves during hurricanes and other storm events and reduce corrosion from the aggressive marine environment. The estimated construction cost is $9 million. A detailed evaluation of this alternative was conducted. No impacts to cultural resources are anticipated. Acquisition of private property will not be needed. Potential impacts of the proposed replacement bridge to Honeymoon Island residents and other stakeholders, the natural environment, wildlife, and recreation areas are anticipated to be minimal. Raising the profile of the tide relief bridge will require closure of the existing access driveways near the east end of the tide relief bridge. A new access driveway on the north and south sides of the causeway will be constructed further east. There is an opportunity for construction of a one-way turnaround under the bridge for vehicles traveling from the north to the south side of the causeway. The turnaround would provide an option which would eliminate the need for vehicles on the north causeway beaches to make a left turn onto Causeway Boulevard in heavy traffic to travel east to the mainland. Visual impacts of the proposed bridge are subjective. 3D models which provide information about how the new bridge would look from various viewpoints are available for your review at tonight's meeting. The preliminary screening analysis considered nine replacement alternatives consisting of three vertical clearance options on three different alignments. Vertical clearance options included 
a low-level movable bridge with 21 feet of vertical clearance similar to the existing bridge, a mid-level movable bridge with 35 feet of vertical clearance, and a high-level fixed bridge with 65 feet of vertical clearance. Each of these options was evaluated on an alignment shifted completely north or south of the existing bridge. In addition, an alignment approximately the same as the existing bridge was considered. Alternatives on this alignment would require construction of a two-lane temporary bridge to maintain vehicular, pedestrian, and bicycle traffic during construction. Results of preliminary screening of these nine alternatives indicated that the lowest overall impacts to recreation areas, wetlands, and utilities would result from construction of a new bridge on approximately the same alignment as the existing bridge. Construction of a new bridge on this alignment will require a temporary bridge, which will result in temporary impacts. Accordingly, the following replacement alternatives, all which would be constructed on approximately the same alignment as the existing bridge, were carried forward for further study. A low-level movable bridge with a minimum vertical clearance of 21 feet. A mid-level movable bridge with a minimum vertical clearance of 35 feet. And a high-level fixed bridge with a minimum vertical clearance of 65 feet. A detailed evaluation of these three alternatives was conducted. The following was determined for all three main bridge replacement alternatives. No business or residential relocations will occur. No additional private property will be acquired. There will be no permanent net loss of recreational areas. No direct impacts to Honeymoon Island State Park, major city utilities, or cultural resources are anticipated. Noise impacts will be minimal. Minimal permanent and temporary impacts are anticipated for wetlands and seagrass, protected species, and other wildlife or their habitat. Total construction time will be about four years. However, disruption to recreation areas and traffic will only occur for about 2.5 years. All three alternatives will provide a minimum of 100 feet of horizontal clearance for navigation. All replacement bridges will be constructed to last about 75 years. The cost to maintain and operate the high-level fixed bridge over the 75-year design life will be substantially less than the costs to maintain and operate either movable bridge option over the same time period. This cost is not included in the estimated construction costs. The proposed new low-level movable bridge will provide a minimum of 21 feet of vertical clearance. The maximum grade will be 3%, which is similar to the existing bridge. Visual impacts of the replacement low-level movable bridge are not anticipated to differ substantially from the existing condition. The estimated construction cost for this alternative is $75 million. The existing access to the north and south beach areas on Ward Island closest to the bridge will be relocated just west of Rotary Park. The existing access to the north and south sides of the causeway near the east end of the bridge will remain open. The proposed new mid-level movable bridge will provide a minimum of 35 feet of vertical clearance. Bridge openings will be reduced about 50%. The maximum grade will be 3%, which is similar to the existing bridge. In addition, the higher profile will reduce the potential for damage from high waves during hurricanes and other storm events and reduce corrosion from the aggressive marine environment. The estimated cost for the mid-level movable bridge is about $76 million. The existing access to the north and south beach areas on Ward Island closest to the bridge will be relocated just west of Rotary Park. There is an opportunity to construct a one-way turnaround at both ends of the proposed bridge to eliminate the need for vehicles on the north side of the causeway to make a left turn onto Causeway Boulevard in heavy traffic. The existing access to the north and south sides of the causeway at the west end of the bridge will be closed and relocated further west on the causeway. The high-level fixed bridge will provide a minimum of 65 feet of vertical clearance. Bridge openings will be eliminated. The grade of the new bridge will be steeper than the grade of the existing bridge, but will not exceed 5%. The higher profile will reduce the potential for damage from high waves during hurricanes and other storm events and reduce corrosion from the aggressive marine environment. The estimated cost for this alternative is $48.9 million.
The existing access to the north and south beach areas on Ward Island closest to the bridge will be closed. New access roads will be constructed further east. The access road to the beaches on the south side of Ward Island will impact Rotary Park. This alternative also provides an opportunity to construct a one-way turnaround at both ends of the proposed bridge to eliminate the need for vehicles on the north side of the causeway to make a left turn onto Causeway Boulevard in heavy traffic. The existing access to the north and south sides of the causeway at the west end of the bridge will be closed and relocated further west on the causeway. The results of the detailed evaluation are summarized in the Alternatives Evaluation Matrix in your handout and on display here tonight. The matrix includes additional information about the proposed replacement alternatives for the tide relief and main bascule bridges compared to the no-build alternative. Potential visual impacts of the alternatives vary and are subjective. 3D models of the alternatives were developed. Computer renderings of these models from various points of view were prepared and can be viewed on display boards and on a video monitor in the main meeting room tonight. In addition, animations which simulate a helicopter ride over the alternative concepts were prepared. The renderings and animations will also be posted on the project website. A visual preference survey was conducted at the kickoff open house last year. Based on the results of this survey, two aesthetic themes were used to develop the renderings and models for the viable alternatives. The Florida vernacular theme was applied to the low-level movable bridge. The modern theme was applied to the mid-level movable and fixed high-level alternatives for the main bridge. The modern theme was also used for renderings of the tide relief bridge. Your comments on these themes are welcome. The final look and aesthetic elements of the bridges will not be finalized during the PD&E study. There will be additional opportunities for input concerning aesthetics after a preferred alternative is selected and final design is underway. This video presentation will be shown continuously until 7.15 p.m. tonight. Please visit the main activity room to view graphics, 3D renderings, and other information about the alternatives evaluated for the Dunedin Causeway Bridges. Project team members will be available to answer your questions. Your comments are welcome. You can provide comments by completing the questionnaire provided at the sign-in table, completing the comment form that you received in the mail or at the sign-in table, calling or emailing the county's project manager, Ms. Nancy McKibben. Her contact information is included in the handout you received today. The questionnaire or comment form can be left in the comment box provided at tonight's meeting, or you can give the completed forms to any project team member. The questionnaire is also available on the project website. If you prefer, you can complete the comment form after tonight's meeting and mail it to the address printed on the back of the form. Please mail the forms or email your comments to the county no later than April 19, 2016. At any time during the PD&E study, you can submit your comments by visiting the Contact Us page on the project website, www.pinellascounty.org slash Dunedin Causeway. The study is anticipated to be completed in 29 months. Opportunities for continuing community input will be available for the duration of the study. Thank you for your interest and participation in this important project. We hope you find tonight's workshop informative. We look forward to your comments.